What's up guys, for everyone watching, today we're bringing back another one of my video reviews of a important match in history, and today's going to be the 2022 North American International Championship Finals. For those of you who don't know, this happened about a week ago in Columbus, Ohio, one of the largest events in history, featuring two amazing players, Azul Garcia Griego and Isaiah Bradner in the finals. So today we're going to take a look at what happened in that match, what could have gone better for both these players, and well, um... Yeah, you know the drill. There's going to be competitive level analysis, and we're going to talk through everything. And if you guys enjoy this kind of content, let me know, and I will do more of it. Let's see if we can skip ahead a little bit. Both these players incredibly accomplished in their own right. Isaiah having his quote-unquote first rookie season uh, coming up. It was split up between the 2019 to now because of COVID, but Isaiah has accomplished more than a lot of first years ever have, achieving a top four at regionals, a finals at regionals, EUIC top eight, and now NAIC top eight. Very impressive resume. Uh, Azul, also an impressive resume, Player Cup 3 champion, Oceania Top 8, the LASC finalist, and the Toronto Regional Champion. Azul also boasts numerous other accomplishments, and so it's a little bit of an old guard versus the new guard kind of deal. Um, it, it's, it's very cool. It's very cool to see, hey, it's me in the corner right here. I'm wearing, like, very fun shirts, so you can tell it's me. Um, so these players are putting out their prizes. We do see Azul... Uh, playing the double path to the peak prize is important and the big important thing here for Isaiah is the training court is prized So now if the path to the peak comes into play Isaiah won't be able to use that star portal ability and that radiant Greninja effectively because as I Isaiah's list only plays one of that card um, Important to note both these players knew each other's deck list coming into the event because we had a full day before the finals or like a full night I guess both these players exchange deck lists to make it even ground Isaiah gets to go first, which puts him at a significant advantage, uh, giving him access to getting to the first uh, Palkia, and being able to go into Palkia and taking out the first Flying Pikachu is very important. So Azul can then only go into one Flying Pikachu, and then, like, Azul is going to go Flying Pikachu, uh, or going to Arceus Accelerate to a Pikachu. Isaiah is going to knock out the peak. Azul is going to either swing in with the Arceus or kill with the Pikachu, and then in that same turn, what Isaiah can do is bring up something, Greninja, flow the two things, 90-90, and then now both these are in knockout range. And so unless Azul has like a boss's orders or something to put himself ahead, uh, he's got to go boss Pikachu to get to take the knockout. So at that point, uh, if he does boss Pikachu, Isaiah can go into another th a third Palkia and it's Stabble C Roxanne um, path or like just Roxanne and uh, put Azul down to like a two card hand, putting him in a winning position. So Isaiah starts off with the um, VIP pass, a very important card. Radiant Greninja being grabbed as well as the water energy, allowing him to draw a ton of cards here. Um, this is uh, probably the most ideal start you can ask for. One VIP pass is like kind of all the deck needs to get going. The more salvos you have on board, the better it is for sure. Um, but for now, uh, this is this is like a perfect way to do things. So um, Isaiah shuffling up, getting you know a little bit a little bit of time there taken, getting us going. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. Uh, we're gonna see the trade coming in. Uh, Isaiah is now putting the energies onto the board like he needs to. We're gonna see. Uh, there's a quick ball in hand as well. There's a scoop up net, another trade real quick to draw two more cards. Seeing if he can get another VIP pass. No dice here. Uh, Isaiah does not mind putting another water into the discard. It is an expendable resource here because we can reuse it with Melanie and the, v the star portal next turn. Um, Azul most likely is not going to want to path himself on the first turn going second. And Isaiah knows that. He knows that Azul does not want to path himself because Azul's deck requires so heavily on this star birth ability and using the Crobat V to draw cards in the early game. So needing both of those cards, uh, path just shuts them both off. So we're going to see Isaiah set up his board a little more efficiently and we're going to see the pass over. Azul has a lot of energy cards in your hand, which is not what you want. If he had an Arceus in the active spot, it would have been really good. But uh, we don't see that. So Azul deciding, do I attach an energy or just bank on trying to hit an RCS energy? And he's going for the RCS energy to try to establish his board in that manner. We see the quick ball. We see the Crobat. Uh, Azul's going to go ahead and quick ball with the Phoebe, a dead card in this matchup. Absolutely banger in every other matchup. Uh, not every other matchup. Any, anytime you see a Melt Tank, sorry. <laughs> it doesn't do. It's not your win all card. We're going to go ahead and grab ourselves the Arceus here. Um, Arceus plus energy is the, uh, I think correct move here um, he goes ahead and grabs the Arceus I believe he's got the Arceus energy it's not the DTE that he wanted he can still be greedy for it and try to uh, try to dig um, he's thinking about his bench size uh, because the bigger your bench size is the more you give Isaiah so he's going to go ahead and bench the Arceus he's going to attach the energy just commit to it he's debating on the path or not I think in his hand he's thinking about it I think the Crobat for three is an excellent play I think he might be thinking if I path here um, so he's just not going to Crobat he's just not going to give uh, Isaiah the free prize cards here 
Uh, and this puts Isaiah in a really winning spot because if he can pivot the active, take out the flying Pikachu, uh, then Azul, no matter if he gets the RCS down next turn and attacks into the Palkia and gets a Pikachu on the board, that Pikachu cannot become a VMAX, which is really important for Isaiah because then one Gust Effect takes out that Pikachu, and we know that at that point Azul should be out of a significant amount of resources. And so from that point onwards, the game should be locked up for Isaiah. So we're going to see the Drizzle coming through with the Irida. Um... And Raihan is already in the discard pile, so what uh, what uh, Isaiah can do as well is go ahead and grab the uh, a way to bring up the uh, the Arceus and knock it out to prevent Azul from even powering up his board because Raihan is already gone and Azul has no additional draw mechanisms on the board, so Azul can't even palpad back the Raihan and find it in the same turn. Um, that is something that is physically impossible right now, actually. So from Isaiah's perspective, maybe it might just be better to take out the. Um, yeah, so we see the Hydro Break coming through. Three Waters attached to the Palkia, the Choice Belt coming through, and there's the Hydro Break taking the Knockout. This puts uh, Isaiah super far ahead now because Azul can't really... Like, he's going to go into the Flying Pikachu. He's going to probably go Path Marnie, but so many energy are gone. You have no attack this turn. You're flying either Flying Pikachu or Crobat or whatever you promote is going to take a free hit. Um, we see the Crobat this turn, trying to dig a little bit deeper. Um, had Azul had something like the Arceus, another Arceus in play this turn, maybe he'd be okay. We're going to see the path come through, and I think it's just going to... Okay, so there's going to be an Ultra Ball getting rid of two Marnies. So now Azul's down so many resources. This is the um, downside of a deck like this, where you kind of have to play the cards that show up in your hand. You don't really have any control over like finding cards in a certain order besides your uh, besides Starbirth. Um, and uh, without Starbirth, well, we're in a situation like this. So we're going to see... The Arceus come down a Marnie, uh, drawing Azul some cards here. Uh, he needs to find an energy card desperately, and there it is. There's an energy card, putting Azul in a position where he can now accelerate with the Arceus uh, onto the Pikachu, which is, I think, fine. Uh, he's going to have to put the Bidoof down because he's going to have the Roxanne or something next turn. Uh, he has no real other option, and all three energy have to go onto the Pika. You're now putting Isaiah in a spot where you're going to put him down to one. Like Isaiah's going to take two prize cards here, and then the next turn, Isaiah can effectively just find a boss's orders onto this crowbat uh or double cross searcher and the game is going to end uh there's no world where isaiah doesn't get two powered up palkias here um so yeah azul only getting one energy oh what's he doing here yeah, he's gonna do two there okay he's doing this so he has the dt in hand it's basically just telegraphing there's a dt in my hand maybe i need the basic energy to set up another pikachu if possible um or another attacker. I don't really know uh, what the thought process is here. Or like a Charon's Care. Uh, from Isaiah's perspective, you just set up another Palkia. Make yourself uh, Roxanne proof as much as possible. And go from there. We see the Melanie come through. One, two, three. Perfect supporter here. Gets energy onto the board. We see a Palpad as well. Um, there is the V-Star that we got off that. No, no Irida in hand is a little bit scary. If I'm Isaiah here, I think I go ahead and always Palpad back the Irida. Giving yourself the out to just win the game. With uh, that kind of that kind of line, we see the waters being pulled from the deck as well. Um, this can give Isaiah a pivot here onto one of the uh, Intellion line. The Intellion line now gets a pivot, uh, and then we're gonna see the Palpad come through. Uh, I think just Irida. You probably don't really care about the Melanie, um, but he does put the Melanie back in. I think to power up another Palkia if possible. Uh, I guess you can quick ball for a Palkia here if you have the outs too, but he does not. So we're just gonna see the knockout come through. Now Zul needs to find the Roxanne. But he has no way to draw it, no star birth, nothing of that nature. We have a Vibarrel. So Vibarrel for four, two, three, four. There is the Roxanne. Azul does find it raw. Um, I mean, when you have no star birth, it is probably one of the scariest things for this deck uh, to do that. Um, and, I mean, he finds it. He's going to just fail it, and he's going to go ahead and Roxanne. Uh, just thinning out some of those cards that are significantly worse in his deck. Uh, being able to go down to a lower hand size. Putting Isaiah down to a two-card situation where uh well isaiah has to find any boss effect any gust effect that crobat is a sitting duck um isaiah can't really attack into the active if he doesn't establish another palkia um doesn't even look at the cards we see azul's six cards coming through another pikachu we see the crobat v max now making it more difficult for isaiah to win the game because there's now it's not just a boss's orders but an echoing horn plus a, a gusting effect or a palkia bench attach and hit into the active is also fine and we're going to see the knockout come through Isaiah did not attach a water last turn. Um, curious as to why that didn't happen after the bucket. That's the only thing I could think of. We're going to see the training court come through, and we're going to see the Greninja draw two cards. 
quick ball and a Marnie. So not really what you're looking for here. Uh, he can still look for it with the Marnie. Or is that Roxanne? I can't tell, actually. Um, you have to quick ball away the Manaphy here. Grab yourself another Palkia. Attach to it, for sure. Um, I think that's the best angle here. Just establish your board in a way that's uh, beneficial to win the game in the next turn, too. Uh, you can still Marnie into the game with uh, Horn double switcher or like Inteleon Shady Dealings plus Horn. Um, so we're going to see the Zigzagoon being grabbed. A very interesting grab here from Isaiah. I think I would like to see the Palkia plus Energy. We're going to see the 10 on active. Attach here. We're going to see the Marnie come through. So what math does that help here? If Isaiah has full board, 60, 160, two, uh, 220 right now, um, there's no choice belt left, so we can't even reach for this. Um, so just an interesting number, I guess. Uh, I would have preferred to grab the Palkia every time, I think. And we're going to see the level ball. There's a drizzle for the Shady. Yep, then it looks like he's got it. He found two of the pieces. There it goes. There's the incense. There's the thing. There's a the switcher. There's the horn. We're going to see the horn and double switcher, the retreat, and the knockout. Isaiah getting very fortunate off that morning, getting every single piece he needed. Very crazy. I think that was a very risky play to grab the Zigzagoon over the Palkia there that turn. I think the attachment to the Inteleon is completely fine. Um, but I think you had to kind of bank on... Um, like, that morning was completely okay. Everything was okay. But I think you grabbed the Palkia because Goon doesn't really do anything for you damage-wise there. I think it doesn't, like, really significantly alter what your damage numbers are. So, a little bit of an interesting choice, I think, um, from uh, Isaiah, but yeah. We're going to see our players put out their prize cards here, if possible. Okay. Azul prizing one of his Arceuses, which is important, and the capture, which I guess is less relevant, but it is there. Let's see what Isaiah's prizes are as he finishes shuffling up, and sets his prize cards. Skip ahead a little bit. Oh, I missed the prize cards. Okay, we'll see right here. And they are coming out. Okay, one switcher. It's not too bad. It's in the bottom. So uh, he's going to be able to get that switcher and play the game. Isaiah with a Zigzagoon start. Not your ideal starter, especially in a matchup like this where you want that 10 damage ping. Um, Azul starting a pretty insane hand with a quick ball. Um, I think he's got like pretty much everything he needs in that hand. Uh, actually like i think i saw a quick ball i think i saw an ultra ball i think i saw an incense like that hand seems juiced for azul like nothing like that first hand first game hand where it's like all energies nothing nothing going for him uh <laughs> no cigar kind of deal this one's like an all smoke no breaks kind of hand yeah i think i see all those pieces in there uh i think badoof might be the correct answer here badoof seems correct grab a badoof and then go or like go get the pika even and maybe go into the crowbat this turn try to find the energy card with the draws that you have available to you um the Crowback goes into hand. We're going to see an Ultra Ball away. Um, the Marnie? Okay, that's an interesting choice. I think you keep your only supporter. Yeah, okay. I guess he's getting rid of the supporter. Just saying, like, I will find something here. Uh, he will have Starbirth probably next turn. That's why I think he's, like, relying on that. He has the Incense. He has all these pieces in his hand. Double Incense, I think. Um, important to note that there's now the Arceus in hand. He has Starbirth guaranteed for next turn. Um... He's going to just dig deeper. Azul said, you know what? I'm going to just play it safe. I don't need to find that. I don't need to keep this incense. This card is nothing for me. I got rid of my supporter already. All I need this turn is to find an energy attachment. And Azul is now full committing with the Starbirth being the last card in his hand. <clears throat> finds the energy. Finds the Bidoof. Finds the Flying Pika and a follow-up supporter. Everything is here. Everything is looking good for Azul. There's a boss's orders in hand as well to put pressure on anything that Isaiah wants to do. So we're going to see all these pieces come down and a pass from Azul. So now we're going to see Isaiah's hand, which has a VIP pass, which is a good start to begin with. Uh, you can never you can never go wrong with the VIP pass <laughs> on the first search. I'm going to skip through Isaiah's first search because it takes quite a while, usually. And we're going to see uh, the double Sobble, the Palkia, and the pass. Uh, very, very standard. No energy is a little bit unfortunate from Isaiah's side. Uh, can't really complain. Uh, there's a lot of energy ways, and find, ways to find it. It's just really unfortunate that we didn't find that uh, immediately off the bat. So we're going to see Azul. Yeah. I think if I'm Azul, I Starbirth for the DTE and the Barrel here. 
Maybe just research first, see what you get. I think bossing up the bossing up a Sobble seems completely okay as well. Um, just put Isaiah in a little bit of a sticky situation, or bossing up the Palkia preemptively and swinging into it, uh, knowing that his situation probably isn't that great. We're going to see the attachment here. We're going to see a V-Star. What are we grabbing here? Probably Path and uh, Pika, or a way to get a Pika. Uh, Ultra Ball is good here because we're going to want to thin with the Viveral. Azul getting down all the way down. He's acknowledging this is going to be my only RCS for the game. Grabbing a Crobat VMAX as opposed to the other Pika, saying that I'm just going to build my board up with big guys. You can't really get a one-shot here. If you commit your one-choice belt, you're already in danger. Keeping his bench at three means that the board can cap out at 220, 250, 260 with the choice belt. Uh, there is no quick shooting in Isaiah's deck, so 260 is where the cap lies with Horn, 280. So that flying Pika never goes down here. Benching another Pokemon probably does open up a window where... Uh, Azul could get knocked out with a full two benches. Introducing 260, Choice Belt, uh, plus double Ziggs Gunping is 310 uh, with the Horn. So that does introduce a knockout if possible, and we see the knockout from Azul on this end. Uh, board is completely set up. His It's a very scary board. Isaiah has a lot to deal with. Um, I don't know what you do if you're Isaiah here. You go for the Bucket, a very standard start, stock standard. Um, you need to find the Melanie as soon as possible here to even get an attack off, but is it even correct? Like, what do you even attack into? Like, from Isaiah's perspective, like, this is kind of a doomed game, in my opinion. Um, like, what do you even do uh, from a position like this? Like, it's a very scary position to be in. It's a very, like, you are staring up a wall. Like, it is really hard to play from a position like this, um, especially going second. We're going to see the buckets. We're going to see the drizzle. What are we looking for here? Um, Probably. Bleed, just set up another Palkia. So we go Irida for Greninja Nets. So he's going to go ahead and get the Stadium with this uh, Drizzle. And I think the idea is that we're going to net up the board, look for a trade, try to find another. We can, we can Quick Ball Water to the discard as well. So we can trade first. Just look for any way to get a Water. Or we can... Mm, Net the Greninja back. I guess Attach Retreat also gets us there, so we just need to find a way to get a water. Um, and that's like literally it. Just finding a way to get a water here. And we can get the 90-90 on the Arceus as well as the uh, Pikachu. Or just 90-90 both the VMAXs. And then Azul now has a two damaged VMAXs in play, which means that Isaiah over the course of two boss effects can win the game. Um, but given that if he uses the V-Star power here to power up the Greninja... Uh, that might not be as possible because we would need to Melanie or something of that nature coming up. Uh, a lot of blanks here from Isaiah not getting where we need to be. I think we're one energy card short of the goal, um, especially this turn. So maybe this turn is just one where we sack the Drizzle um, and just get the energy back with the Quart attached to a Palkia. Just get an attachment onto board and then look for the same play next turn where we can go... Um, where we can look for the 90-90 on the two VMAXs, uh, providing that window. I think you always court back the energy in case Azul has path. Oh, no, you already... I think he court drew. Oh, he's just going to go ahead and V-Star preemptively, knowing that... Um, knowing that we're in danger. I think you have to commit to the Greninja here. I don't think there's another line. Yeah, you're never getting the energies on Greninja if you don't do this play. So, we commit... We hard commit to this... Um, And then now Azul just needs to boss up, I think, the Greninja and knock it out in the game. Effectively, ends. Um, like, this would be a scoop angle from anyone if the Greninja gets pulled up. Uh, yeah, we're going to see the Greninja. And I think this is where, like, I this is where I would personally scoop. I don't think there's even a Roxanne play. I don't think there's any, like, plan of action that he can do. You know that the V-Star power is gone. You know he's going to have to Melanie to power up a board. Um, you can just grab the Pika, I think, set up a, set up a second Pika, even. And um, I don't know. This game is super over. It's super, 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 super over. Um, so I would see where the scoop comes through. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit because I think this is a little bit over. And these both these players are taking a lot of time because they're methodical and it is a finals. Um, so we're going to see from Isaiah's perspective the Inteleon coming through. And we're trying to figure out what the line is. How do we win this game? How do we do enough damage to actually do something? It's got to be a boss up the Pika, hit the Pika angle. Pika, if Pika comes back, you hit the Pika, and then 
the problem is you're one turn too short even if you bring up a crowbat like there's nothing you can do if the crowbat comes up like what do you you have to, if you can one shot peek at this turn maybe like it has to be choice belt like goon everything this turn but i think goon was like the opener so you don't even have goon to accelerate that damage um so we literally have no out i think if you have goon you can even horn fill the bench cross switch at the pika one shot the pika and then you have an out to even win with a one shot on a crowbat or a two shot on a crowbat but now because of the goon being your opener we no longer have that angle um so i think this is definitely a scoop angle i think isaiah is just playing it out i don't know why and i think Isaiah going second especially in this game three scenario you never 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 want to be here for this this like this long of a time like we're we're sitting here for way too long i think uh especially because we are going second in the grand scheme of things um we're gonna see the solve getting grabbed from the prize cards with the heavy ball and we're gonna see the water getting grabbed with the court attach return palkia comes down third palkia second palkia v star and a pass so nothing spectacular from isaiah's side just setting up i mean now we're even a whole attack behind like i think azul just he doesn't like i mean a boss would like just seal the game on the spot here um azul i don't think i saw a boss in his hand um but he can i guess like attach for turn ultra ball away cards maybe even marnie like marnie doesn't even matter yeah now we have the big peak as well like He can even Marnie the energies back into the deck and then because he knows that Isaiah has big shady dealings in hand. So this way you just like put that card away completely. You know that Goon is gone, so I think you're allowed to bench if you want to, like overbench here if you're Azul, because you know that Zigzagoon is gone, so the extra damage modifier is no longer in the deck. And you know that from You know from personal, like you know from like list experience that um Isaiah does not play any quick shooting, no modifier of that nature. You know that um, this is it. Like this is this is where like the game is effectively locked up. If I'm Isaiah, you draw for turn, see what you can do. But it should be a pretty quick concede, I think, from this situation. And there it is. There's a concession. We're moving into a game three scenario. Um, this is where I remember this personally because okay, so Isaiah puts out his prizes. We see a drizzle, which is important, and the one boss's orders. The one boss's orders does make an impact because it means Isaiah needs to find a double cross switcher to get a knockout at this point in time. And now we're going to see what Azul does. And I think it was four mulligans. We're going to just skip ahead through the mulligans. But it was four mulligans. And Isaiah, we're going to look at the hand. Look at those cards. He's going to draw for turn. He has a Greninja. He has an Energy. And he has a Bucket as well. Thinning two more cards. You know you have so many outs to basic Pokemon. There's four Battle VIP Pass. We saw one prized. We saw there's like four Quick Balls. Or three Quick Balls, I think. There's a significant. There's three Palkia, three Sable. There are so many basic Pokemon in the deck. Uh, to just get a Palkia into play on the first turn. And we're going to see Isaiah go ahead and grab the two waters out of the deck. Uh, and use this Concealed Cards ability. Uh, we know that Sobble is in the prizes. And that's the only card we know that is a basic Pokemon that we don't have at the current moment. So we're going to see the Concealed Cards grabbing two waters. Thinning the deck even further. Four mullions later, we have a 13 card hand uh, with the water energies. And we're going to see the Concealed Cards going up to, I think, no, it's... Seven, open a basic, plus four, plus two now. Or minus one, plus two. So we're at 11 now, and we're going to go down one, plus two. So we're going to see two cards. And is there a Palkia? There is no way to find a Palkia in Isaiah's hand, which is so unfortunate. This never, ever happens. I think Azul is over the moon now. He understands, like, oh my god, uh, I have been saved, basically, um, <laughs> by this insanely large hand that does not have a way to find a um Palkia in it which is so sad like I wish this on none of my friends none of my fans no one watching like this sucks if this happens um we're gonna see the attach from Azul just playing it super super safe um and just goes ahead and gives it back to Isaiah uh, Isaiah now has the outs to find a Irida probably there's there's got to be an Irida in that hand um got to be there's yeah there's an yeah we're gonna see another trade there's the Irida. We didn't even see the Irida till that point. Like, there was no Irida in that hand, man. Like, that hand was not good. There was a lot of bad cards. Th those are the hands that I had during my tournament. That is how I lost. Like, that is how I did not make a win until round four. Um, so, 
that is heartbreaking from Isaiah's perspective. But the game is still fine. The game is still completely okay. We have the Greninja play available to us. Uh, we have a ton of stuff available to us. We have to retreat the Greninja out, obviously. We can't leave that guy in the active. We're going to have to basically sack a sob. We'll probably keep calling this turn. And, okay, so here's here is a crucial misplay that Isaiah makes. This turn, when Isaiah eared us for the Palkia and the Quick Ball, Isaiah should have grabbed the Hisu and Heavy Ball, grabbing the Sobble out of the prizes. Now watch what he does. He understands that he wants to grab Quick Ball to get rid of the Battle VIP pass in hand, and I think he Tunnel Visions on that. Uh, and now we get one Sobble, because we're always keep calling this turn. There's no world where we don't keep calling this turn, because our hand is just so significantly bad. And we're going to see the Retreat, and we're going to see the Keep Calling for one Sobble. Because the other Sobble is in the prize cards. And now watch as this comes back to bite Isaiah in just a quick minute. Azul is now going to go ahead and fill up his board. V-starring out what he needs to get. I think he grabbed a Marnie. Uh, I, I want to say that was a Marnie in his hand. Attach. And then we're going to see the Marnie. Getting rid of Isaiah's now monstrously large hand. You cannot let a deck like that keep that hand. Um... Just because you know you know what it means, you just can't do that. So we're gonna see the three attach three energy attachment. And from Isaiah's perspective, you need to you need to go to Greninja this turn. You need to Greninja. Like you need to get that ninety damage on the board. You there's no path. You have the ability to draw cards. If you can go double ninety and establish another Palkia, um, then you're in a position where uh, you can, uh, like if you go double ninety, establish a Palkia on the bench. What you can do. <laughs> That's greedy, I think, if you Melanie here. And then you have to Irida for the bucket. I mean, you can drizzle for a ball card, I guess. So you can just, yeah, you can Melanie here. He has enough waters in the discard. Um, the biggest thing you need to do here is effectively uh, get the 290s up and get another Palkia up and running if you can. And then you can go 90-90, kill the Pikachu, the turn it comes up and kills your guy. And then Azul is left with nothing. Um, like, Azul is just going to be in a bad spot if that happens. And Azul is now already used Starbirth, so you're just banking on the fact that he doesn't have boss. If he has boss, the game ends if you don't have another Palkia. Um, so we're going to see what Isaiah does here. Bucket and two waters come through with the Drizzle. Acting as a draw two here. Um, there is no other out to... Where's the net come up? There's the Manaphy. Trade again. An incense coming through once again. Grabbing another Palkia, or grabbing the V-Star. Um, we haven't played it yet, I guess. Sure, it makes sense. I thought we already played it. That's my bad. I missed that, I guess. But no way to grab another Palkia, uh, which is really disheartening because that is something that's very important. We see another net. That comes down. We keep the basic Pokemon in hand. Um, we're going to go ahead and court here, grabbing back and energy, attaching for turn. I think you have to attach the Palkia. Yeah, of course. And we're going to start portal. Getting the three waters. I mean, this is the turn you have to 90, 90, and you just have to say there's no boss. Like you don't have another play. You have to say, Azul, you don't have a boss. I'm going to have to do this play, and I'm going to have to find a way to kill your guy next turn. Uh, Isaiah needs to maximize better top decks, so he needs to put these Irida's, the Irida and the Melanie back in is fine. I think you need the Irida at the very least, because Irida does grant you a chance to get a one-shot. Uh, now what Isaiah needs next turn is to fill his bench. There's not 220 on this guy, so we need to get Choice Belt, Zigzagoon, Full Bench, Horn. Yeah, that's a lot of cards. I don't even think Azul put a Pokemon in the discard. That's the kicker here. Um, Azul can go get a Pikachu this turn. Uh, but I don't think it is in his best interest to do so. So we're going to just see the knockout. Um, not grabbing the Pikachu, giving uh, Isaiah that free damage. And now we're going to see what cards were more need uh, in, this, in this instance. So, 60... No, no, he doesn't even need the Goon, because that's 180. It's No, he does need the Goon, but no Horn. It's just it's just Choice Belt. It's Choice Belt, a bossing effect Goon for the knockout on this Pikachu now. 
and the boss is priced, so it has to be double switcher. And Isaiah should know this at this point that the double switcher is priced. And here is where you're going to see the misplay come back in full effect. There is the goon in hand. There's an Irida in hand. Okay, Shady Dealings and Talion is live. We're able to get more basic Pokemon. We should be able to get there. Um, do we have all the pieces to make this miracle happen? The Irida comes through. We're going to obviously get this guy and the Heavy Ball to get a Pokemon out of the prize cards. Which is our Sobble. There's even a horn in the hand, which <laughs> unfortunately doesn't do us any good because Azul did not put another Pokemon down. Um, this would have been the swing turn. I think this would have been the deciding turn where Isaiah wins the game if everything goes his way. He now has to get the switcher. If you, know, if you notice in his hand, he is now one card short of doing exactly what he needs to do. Uh, which is finding a way, another way to find a basic Pokemon. He's exactly one card short of doing exactly that. And if you remember back to the turn where we quick balled for the Sobble rather than heavy ball for the Sobble, that would have been the difference in this instance. Being able to find another basic Pokemon with that extra quick ball, that additional quick ball that we grabbed here, and making that your fifth basic Pokemon as opposed to the fourth basic Pokemon would have been the game decider, in my opinion. Um, because that happens, and then as soon as that happens, well... <laughs> Azul has no Pikachu left. So even if Azul swings into the Palkia, uh, Isaiah would have presumably quick balled for another Palkia on his end. Um, and <clears throat> like Isaiah would have quick balled for another Palkia <clears throat> on his side, giving himself the out to um, <clears throat> like you're seeing him quick ball or the goon, but we know we know given the contents of his hand and how he played this turnout, that he would have had the knockout given everything based on the cards he grabbed based on what he did he would have had it um and now his only option is to hit into the pikachu and hope azul can establish another pikachu and if azul establishes a second pikachu this game is over um from this position onwards and it's really unfortunate because we were so close if we were on isaiah's side if we're on azul's side this is probably the moment you are kingmaker this is the moment you've realized you probably win the tournament um you still have your crowbat you still have everything you don't even need to path anymore the greninja is gone uh, path only hurts you now, so all you have to do is keep the training court in play. Uh, Isaiah, I think, discarded his path as well. Uh, maybe not, actually. I think the path is still in hand. So you just play you just play as perfectly as you can here. Uh, get, thin out your whole deck, get the pieces going. You're fine putting the Bidoof down this turn, going into the barrel if you need to. Um, and then you basically are in a position where everything is locked up for you if you're Azul. Just, just cross... Just, Cross your T's, dot your I's here. There's the energy onto the Pika. Um, he should have courted back an energy, I think. I think there was one in the discard. Uh, I don't think so, actually. Maybe not. And we see the Drizzle grabbing a Roxanne. And now we're going to see a prayer from Isaiah getting this thing down. We're going to see the Horn coming out, bringing the Arceus back. No reason to keep these dead cards in your deck. We're going to see the Roxanne. Azul, uh, Isaiah needs a... Uh, I mean, this, it's still winnable. It's still completely winnable because Azul's going to go down to two cards. We're going to need Azul not to get anything if you're... Yeah, like anything off these three. And Isaiah needs to find a Palkia V-Star. And I don't see a Palkia V-Star. So the writing on the wall is there. We're going to have to see a retreat. Another Palkia hits the bench and a pass. And what does Azul have in that three-card hand of his... A pumpkaboo, pumpkaboo, getting rid of the path, a DTE, and a research. Oh my lord. And that should be it. Uh, we're going to see the Ultra Ball getting the other big peak. No, definitely the barrel, yep. I mean, I guess Isaiah can... Oh, he's already burned Palpat, so there's no way we have the, another access to Roxanne. Uh, quick ball way of path. Um, just grabbing a card to thin. Quick balling that away. Grabbing another card to thin. Azul expertly thinning, expertly sequencing everything. Knowing that this game is effectively won, he just has to make sure that he gets to that end game portion properly. We're going to see the Ultra Ball as well. A free retreat coming into the Arceus. Isaiah's boss being prized also means that we can't make any damage. The Goon is now gone as well over the Horn. Um... And with the goon being gone, there's nothing that Isaiah can do. The writing is on the wall. There are too many threats. And there is the concession from Isaiah Bradner, making Azul Garcia Griego your 2012, oh, 2022 
North American International Champion finalist winner, uh, champion, an incredible set, an incredibly close game that came down to inches. If you guys watched this video and understood the fine semantics of how close a game can be, how small things can impact your entire game plan, this is how close. This is where championships are won. Small mistakes, small decisions, small things is how what separates the top players from everybody else. And this is a game that's exemplifi exemplified of all of that. And if you guys enjoyed this kind of content, thank you so much for watching. Please like, please subscribe, and I will see you guys for another video coming up soon.